the first thing we're going to need to do in Photoshop is to create a new document. Now you can drag and drop an image in here, but then what you might find later on is you're getting issues with files being the wrong size, format or resolution. So we're going to start from the get-go at getting all of those things right. So we click on create new and the great thing about the new version of Photoshop is that we have presets. So here if we're doing film and video work, so this is something we're going to take into Premiere, we can choose the format that we're working on, like here a 1080p video slide and you'll notice that it gives us the width and height in pixels, it gives us the landscape orientation and it also gives us 72 pixels per inch. So that means it's TV screen resolution. What you'll notice when we go to print though is when we pick A4 which is a standard sheet of paper. It defaults to that size of paper in portrait format but you'll see that we're at 300 pixels per inch. So that means that we're working in a much higher quality. So you might notice that sometimes you'll be looking at something on a screen and it looks absolutely fine and when you print it out it looks all pixelated and, and blocky and horrible. It's because you've looked at it at 72 dots per inch on your screen and then you've tried to print it out at 300 dots per inch and that's why you're seeing all of those imperfections. So we're going to start off creating an A4 sheet of paper. I'm going to create it landscape and we're going to make sure we're at 300 dots per inch. We're not going to worry too much about the colour mode at the moment. You'll either be working in RGB or CMYK for print. Just make sure that it's not selected grayscale because you won't be able to add any colour to your image at that point. And you simply hit create. So this is the Photoshop interface and it might look a little bit intimidating when it's the first time you open it but actually the great news is you don't need most of it for most of the time. Really there's only four areas that we need to be paying attention to, five once you get a little bit better at it. The first area is these drop down menus along the top. You might use these few and far between but there is some useful information up here that helps us with some more advanced image manipulation techniques. We've got our toolbar down the side here where all of the tools that we're going to use are located and we've also got a context sensitive menu here so you'll see that when I change tools that menu here will change so it means that we can get to all of the settings for that tool really really easily we don't have to go digging through lots of sub menus anywhere we can just see all that information easily appear at the top of the page. What we also have over here are panels. These are called panels and they're here to help you with lots of different functions of Photoshop, most of which you're not gonna need as you start your journey. So you can actually, if you look up here, see that we've got some arrows that say collapse to icons. We can actually collapse that menu or we could even remove these panels entirely. In the second row of panels, we've got colors, swatches, gradients, lots of things that we're not going to need. So again, what we can do is double click on the tab itself to collapse that panel. We can do that again with the properties and that just leaves us here, the layers. And layers is the big thing that you're gonna be working with in Photoshop. Normally, when you work in paint, you will do what's called destructive editing. So every time you add more paint in Microsoft Paint, you go over the previous version or the previous pixels that you've changed um, and destroy them with the, and replace them with the new pixels. What we do in Photoshop is called non-destructive editing and it means that we can always go back and make adjustments and changes and the only reason we can do that is because we are using layers. So you see my background layer here is just white and if I turn it off well nothing's going to happen because there is nothing else to look at and you also see a little padlock here which means the layer is locked because Photoshop says well you need to have something there you need to have a layer there as a background so that we can prove that we've got a document but down here in the bottom you've actually got a new layer or create new layer button which has got the plus in it and when you click on that you'll see you get layer one and then we can turn the background off so we've turned off our white sheet of paper and now we've got layer one why does it look like it's got all these checkerboard marks all over it? Well that's because instead of being like a white piece of paper you need to be imagining it more like a clear sheet of glass and if I add another layer I've now put another sheet of glass on top of my first sheet of glass and I can keep building those layers up and up and up for as long as I need to in order to create the image or the magazine page or the poster or whatever it is that I'm looking at doing. So the big thing to remember in Photoshop is that we're always adding new information on new layers. 
I'll show you why. If I go back to layer one and we look at our first tool, which is going to be the brush tool. So we click on it. You should see a brush there. But if we click and hold, you'll see that there are actually four tools that fall under the category of brush tool. We don't really need to know any of these, but sometimes when you come to it, someone's been using it and you've got the pencil tool by mistake, just click and hold and go back to the brush tool. The brush tool is great because it enables us to draw just like you do in MS Paint. So down here, I've got colors, foreground and background colors. If I click on the blue, this is my foreground color. So this is the color I'm gonna draw in and let me go and choose like a nice bright red color. So there you can see a fantastic on its side exclamation mark. So if I wanted to add some detail on this, for example, or maybe I wanted to put some blue on the outside of this red, I could do it really, really easily. But now, because I've done it on the same layer, I can't undo what I've done. You know, well, I can, I can hit Control Z and undo it. But later on, maybe two or three days later, when I wanna make some changes to it, I won't be able to undo that because it's set in stone on the same layer. So I'd have to recreate layer one and then make the adjustments. The great thing about Photoshop is I can just undo both of those and that's Control Z is undo. And I can go onto a different layer and I can draw my blue. And now if I change my mind about that blue, I can always go onto the blue layer and say, for example, take my move tool. So I can slide it down a little bit, move it, resize it, add effects, do whatever I want. And I can work completely on my blue equal sign without ever touching my red exclamation mark. And if you do find that having this transparency background of checkerboards starts hurting your eyes after a while, that's why we have a background sheet there so that we can see clearly, making sure we haven't got any ragged edges lying around anywhere when we're doing photo manipulation. Uh, and also our eyes don't go a little bit messy because of the checkerboard background. Now it's all well and good working on an A4 sheet of paper from this sort of distance, but what if we want to do some more detailed work? Okay, I've got my equal sign over my red, but I need to tidy up here. I'm not 100% happy with how much I can see through there. So what am I going to do? Well, I can use the zoom tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is Z, and you'll see that we get a plus in a magnifying glass. So when we click, it zooms in. You can switch to zoom out with the minus in the magnifying glass, and then when we click, we zoom out but this is a really laborious and slow way of doing it. If we hold in Alt and we use the scroll wheel on our mouse, we can zoom in and out as well. The problem is once we're in here and we're working nice and close, you can sort of get lost or lose your orientation within the image. And it can get a little bit annoying having to zoom all the way out and zoom back in again, zoom all the way out and zoom back in again. So you do actually have the option to hold down the space bar which gives you a little hand on the screen. And that means that you can sort of click and grab the, imagine it as a piece of paper that you're looking at and drag the piece of paper off to the side. So it means that you can carry on working, drag the piece of work over, work here, drag the piece of work over. Now, some people, whoops, just undo that. Some people get a little disoriented working really, really close in on an image. And that's why we have this navigator panel inside the windows menu. If you click on that, you'll see it pops out here. We can grab our tab and stick it in any one of these. And now we can see where we are quite easily and navigate that entire page. And also we can zoom in and out using the navigator functions as well. So you might find it easier to use the navigator window or you might just do like I do, hold down Alt and scroll wheel in and then use the space bar to move. So we've looked at the brush tool and we've seen that we can draw quite easily with it. One thing that we didn't talk about is if you right click, you get a menu and that menu will give you the choice between having soft edged brushes, hard brushes. And if you have a look through, there are hundreds of brushes in Photoshop that have all sorts of weird effects, but also you can download brushes off the internet and actually import them using a USB stick and you can do all kinds of weird and wonderful effects. So much so that it's not really worth talking about in an introductory guide. Um, it's one of those cases where if there's a specific thing you, you want to do in Photoshop, chances are there's already a thousand Photoshop tutorials telling you exactly how to do that on YouTube. So that's your best bet to go to search up those brush tools on YouTube. What we're going to do is look at the basics. We've got a size wheel here so we can scroll up and we can make bigger or smaller size brushes. 
Oh, it's very small. There you go. 20 pixels wide, 124 pixels wide. And we can also change the hardness. What does that mean? Well, let's get out of this menu. Whoops. If you hit Control Zero, you'll zoom all the way out straight away, which is a, a nice handy shortcut. And now if I draw a line, you will see that this brush is 100% hardness. So we get this nice hard edge. Now it's a little bit wibbly wobbly because I'm drawing with a mouse. If you draw on a touch screen or with a stylus, you can get some really, really nice effects on Photoshop, but I would highly recommend against drawing with the mouse. You get this horrible wibbly wobbly effect. Now if I pull that hardness all the way down to zero, you'll see a slight difference in the brush. It looks much more like um, a spray can or an airbrush effect and you do get this sort of fuzzy outline to it. Another thing you'll notice is at the top we've got our context sensitive menu and we can change something called flow. So again, if you think about it like an airbrush and you think about how much air is traveling through it, that brings paint with it. So at 100% it's bringing all of the paint with it. But if we drop that down to 50%, you'll see it's bringing a lot less paint with it. So you end up with a slightly fainter line. So when you're doing shading or touch-ups on photos, remembering that you can change the flow of your airbrush is a great way of advancing your airbrushing techniques. Now, if we look back on my layers, you'll see that I've actually put all of that on my red layer. So I've already committed a cardinal sin. So if we make a mistake, we could use our eraser tool. And the eraser tool works exactly the same as the airbrush tool does. It has a flow and an opacity, so how much you can see through it. And if we zoom in here, you can see if we right click, I can put 100% hardness. And when I draw a line through something, it is a crisp, clear line that I'm cutting out. So if I turn off the background, you'll see we're creating transparency again. We're not just painting over it in white, we're actually deleting it from the layer. We can also have a soft edge on it so it can leave a nice feathered edge for us. So if we're, again, if we're manipulating photos and we want a softer edge rather than a hard edge it, to allow it to blend, that's the sort of tool that we'll be using is reducing the hardness here. You can also reduce the flow with your eraser, which means that when you go over something, possibly drop it even more than that, you'll see that we don't take all of it away. So if I put the background back, you'll see that it's gray as opposed to black. So we can drop that flow right down. And you can see I'm leaving quite a bit of the gray behind. I'm not completely erasing it. So again, if you want to completely erase it, you need to move your flow all the way up to 100%. We don't necessarily want to be drawing by hand in Photoshop. That's not what it's designed for. So let's just turn these two layers off, create a new layer to be working on, and make sure that that layer is on the top so that we know that we are looking down and we can see what we're working on. If, for example, I've got that layer behind, when I draw something with my brush tool, you'll see it actually goes behind what's on that top layer. So we want to make sure that whatever layer we're working on is on the top so we can see what we're working on. We can always adjust the order of those layers at a later date, but we always want to make sure if we can that we're working on the top layer so we can see exactly what it is that we're doing. Now we might not want to be drawing by hand. Well, that's fine because we've actually got a shape tool here. If we click and hold, you'll see you've got a bunch of shapes that you can use very much like in PowerPoint. I can take the rectangle tool and whatever color I have selected down here in my color picker, let's pick bright red, and I draw a box, it will then fill that box with that bright red color. And you can see here, it's saying that there is no border and there is a bright red color in the middle. And if I select my move tool, it gets rid of the bounding box. And you can see, there we go, we've got a red box with no border. Let's change that. If I change that over to black and then increase the pixels, you'll see that I can actually manipulate that block after I have created it. So here we could choose the type of line that we have around the outside and the thickness of that line. So the shape tool is super useful, but we don't just have simple shapes like boring old rectangles or rounded rectangles or even polygons. We've actually got the custom shape tool. And again, this is a fantastic feature in Photoshop because you'll notice 
that we can import. Once again, using the append menu here, we can append shapes, it means add in shapes. And so we can have, for example, this says leaf trees. Well, here we go. There's a tree and what I can do is create myself a new layer down here. Turn off that old layer so it's out of the way. Turn off all of these layers so I can see what I'm doing. And now when I draw this custom shape, you can see it actually draws me a tree and it fills it in red. Now what you can see here, all of this blue is all of the vector points that it's drawn for me. So I can actually change out the tool and it just shows me the image that I've drawn. So we can save ourselves a huge amount of time when we're working with custom shapes. For example, if I wanted a silhouette of a person as opposed to a tree, I could come down to my people silhouettes and I could choose whichever one I want. Oh, didn't mean to do it in red. Let's come straight up here to our context sensitive menu and switch over to the black. And when we change to our move tool, we can see we've got this lovely black silhouette. So these are custom shapes and they are editable. Now, when you look over in the layer menu here, you will see that we've got these little icons. These icons mean that the layer isn't editable because it's essentially a quick mask. If you try and click on it to edit it, it will tell you that this shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. So you could say okay, and it will rasterize it and you see it gets rid of that little square. Or you can simply click on the layer you want to rasterize to edit right click and say rasterize layer so it means if i take my eraser tool now i should be able to adjust the size of this briefcase down to a very small bag there we go just simply using the erase tool and if you look at the background i haven't painted it in white i have actually erased it and holding down alt i can zoom in and i can see that because i've used a soft edge brush it doesn't look very convincing so let me go and change that to a hard edge brush and that looks much more like a solid object so control zero pulls us all the way out so that's the shape tool and the shape tools great because you can import all kinds of shapes and then manipulate them from complex shapes like this tree to simple shapes like a silhouette or even let me pull up one more of them you can use flower shapes so these get used quite a lot we can have flowers and oh, black's not a very nice color for a flower is it let's change that to pink there we go and so now we can use these and they're really helpful to use them graphically in logos and in some of our page designs in magazines. Now the issue we've got is sometimes we want to select an object, for example. See what I've done is I've done these two blue lines on this layer and actually I need them further apart than that for whatever reason. Um, but I can't edit them because they're both on the same layer. I can move them both around using the move tool all over the layer, but I can't actually make them further apart from each other. Well, that's where the selection tools come in. So the one that you'll probably use the most is the rectangular marquee tool. But as with every Photoshop tool, click and hold, and you can see you've got a selection. The rectangular marquee tool is the easiest one to use though, because essentially you just draw a box around something you want to select and you can copy that onto a new layer using the edit menu so you can say you could cut it you could copy it and then you could create a new layer and then you could paste it onto the new layer or you could learn the keyboard shortcut which is Control j which copies it onto a separate layer so i can just work on this one do whatever it is that i need to do i'm just going to delete that layer by dragging it down into the trash can go back to our original layer because it's even easier than that and the new CC version of Photoshop all I need to do is select it make sure I haven't got the other one selected actually select that one and then grab my move tool and as I move that object you'll see it actually moves the selection to form around the object and I can move that a little bit closer a little bit further away wherever it is that I want it and when I go into select deselect or control D I've now put them both back together on the same layer without having to create more layers but I've enabled manipulation on that one layer. If I had had a different color in the background, for example, this rectangle, then doing that isn't going to work. If I show you, for example, rasterizing this layer, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate both of these layers. All right, some of my menus keep popping up on the second monitor, unfortunately. So we hit duplicate layers, and then what you can do is say, merge those layers. So now they're on one layer. Turn everything else off. You can see I'm just looking at the copy of layer two. And if I want to do that marquee trick again now, when I use my move tool, 
you'll see it moves all the red in the background as well. So that is a key example as to why we want to make sure that we keep all of our elements on separate layers. So Control D will deselect that. And actually, that layer is useless to me, so I'm going to drag it and drop it in the bin and go back to my equal sign on layer two.